Hey guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new tactics video and today I'm going to be bringing you Didier Deschamps France Invincible FM23 Tactics. If you guys are enjoying these international manager recreations, do leave a like on this video and do subscribe to the channel for more content. But let's get into this tactic, but first we'll break down the results. So let's kick things off then, shall we? Now, as you can see, it is completely invincible from top to finish. We took over at this point here and we're going to work the way down. Now, we are only going to watch the goals from the World Cup because there's quite a lot of games to get through, to be honest. We're going to start off by going over the stats against Austria. Obviously, this is going to be in the European International League Division A, and that is going to be a 2-1 win in a game which we did we did deserve to win. We dominated we dominated the ball, had more shots, and you can't really complain. Um, we did actually go 1-0 up with Nabil Fakir. It's going to be Arnautovic that did get the equaliser, but then Fakir bounces back before the sending off from Dragovic in 96 minutes with a goal in the 74th. So a game which we did deserve to win and what a start to the, to the management, really. We then go again with another 2-1 win. It wasn't until these sort of games here where we picked up, you know, obviously you got three goals going in, three, three, three. Um, but still a good result against Croatia. They're one of them teams which have got some really good players and I think a lot of people do underestimate them sometimes. They do actually go 1-0 up in this game. And this game was a little bit closer in terms of the goals, but we did have more overall and the possession was in our favour. But it is going to be Velasic coming in, who did actually take the lead with Croatia in the 48th minute with an assist from Luka Modric. Who else? We do bounce back, though, with Karim Benzema with an assist from Griezmann and Griezmann getting the goal in the 92nd minute with a lovely assist from Kingsley Coman. But no, this Croatia side is actually quite good. If you'd like to take a look now, you've got Modric, you've got Perisic, Kovacic, Brozovic. Um, the, the back line's not the best, don't get me wrong. Velasic as well. Some decent players, so quite a good result. The most disappointing result, I would say, although we did beat them here, would be this 1-1 draw against Denmark in what was a game which I think we should be winning. Again, we didn't really... I wouldn't, I'm not going to say we deserve to win it because they had more of the ball. We had more shots in terms of... Sorry, we had better XG. We had less shots overall. But <clears throat> it's just one of them games, sorry, which we should be winning. Luckily, it didn't matter too much. It is a very difficult team to play when they do play five at the back, so negative and things like that. But at the end of the day, we could have won this game, but it is going to be a disallowed goal from Karim Benzema in the 94th minute after he equalizes in the 50th. However, we do get a little bit of revenge on them in the World Cup Group D in what was a 2-1 win. And these are going to be where we're going to start watching the actual goal. So to start with, we'll go over the stats of the game. 25 shots, 13 on target, 2.69 XG with 54% of the ball. So I mean, definitely deserve to win. They do go into the game with the same formation. And why wouldn't you? They got a point against us previously. It would be dumb for them to change. But this time around, we did come out on top. Let's watch the goals then. We're going to have it on TV. Let's sit back, relax, and watch the goals. So here we go. It's going to be Kunde winning at the back into Tushinemi. A wonderful ball over into Kylian Mbappe. Ball across, shock and defending. Flicks it on, and Antoine Griezmann gets the tap in at the far post. Mbappe in this system, the assistant actually decided, sorry, to play him on the right hand side. Now, it's an interesting decision, but we've won the World Cup with it. We've gone invincible, so I'm not going to question it, but it was an interesting one. Tushinemi now through the center of the park into Fakir, who just drives through the entire back line. Could have squared it, but he wants to be selfish. He gets the goal. Why not? He's been on form so far, and he makes it 2-0. They do get a goal here, though, which could have could have sparked a comeback. Um, it is actually going to be Benzema who loses possession clumsily and it's going to be wind that tucks in a very easy goal and that is going to make it 2-1 and at this point they could have come back but luckily we managed to defend it out quite resilient at the back to be honest with you and that was a fantastic start to World Cup Group D. We then have a game against Australia and this game now was a game which well I mean we definitely deserve to win I'm going to throw that out there. Australia matching us up with a 4-2-3-1. 10 shots on target, 20 shots overall, 2.48 XG, and more possession. But somehow, Australia took the lead from Rogic. So we're going to watch the goals. We're going to see how their goal went in, see how all of ours went in. Again, clumsy in possession. It's going to be Jones. Great bit of pressing for him, actually, to be fair. On the right-hand side, a ball across into Rogic, and it goes through Megan's legs. And what a moment that would have been for Australia. But the high didn't last very long because we come back 
a beautiful ball out to Mbappe, who is on the right, as I did mention, back into Kunde, who's very advanced, a ball across into Benzema, a little bit too left for the keeper to stop it, and that is going to be an equaliser pretty much instantly. We build up again with Kimbembe into Kante, a bit of patient build up here. Kamavinga, though, goes long eventually into Benzema, who hits it, I want him to hit it, on the volley into the top left corner, and what a finish that is. We go again here with Varane, so calm on the ball, waiting for the option. Kamavinga, great touch, into Mbappe. He just runs, he runs, he runs, he scores. That is what he does. Obviously, with Mbappe, you've got the luxury that he can play on the left, he can play down the right, he can play in the centre. You've got it all with Mbappe. And that is going to be a very comfortable 3-1 win. We then go into the last game of the groups against Tunisia in a game which was very comfortable 4.44 xg 7 on target 27 shots overall more of the ball as well and it takes a fakir goal and a penalty from mbappe to actually get the goals so i mean not the best we probably could have easily got four goals this game but i'm not going to complain too much it's going to be two set pieces then technically a beautiful free kick from fakir and it is going to be a penalty from Kylian mbappe who steps up nearly misses actually he's nearly a save Mbappe gets the goal in not much to talk about, to be honest, with that game. Um, it's an easier side that obviously I've got some decent players. Obviously, they've got Hannibal, for example, but it was a game they didn't really stand a chance in. And we come out, beat them 2 0 to progress into the World Cup second round, which is going to be against Poland. So, Poland ended up 3 1. And this is a game which, again, we deserve to win. I can't really argue it at all. 14 shots, 7 on target, bang on 2 XG, nearly 60% of the ball. Poland rolling with that 4-3-3, decent side indeed. But we went three goals up and their goal come in the 90th minute, which was pretty much just a consolation. So it was a very comfortable game. Um, we're going to see the goals, obviously, as we always do. I guess they lose it here. Kante, what a player. France are missing, by the way. Griezmann picks it up, a beautiful ball into Benzema, who hits it first time. Great vision from um, Griezmann and a fantastic finish from Karim Benzema, who I believe finished top goal scorer, actually. We then go again into Tushinemi, into Kante. Great overlap and run from Tio Hernandez. Wonder ball into the box and Benzema's never going to miss. When you put it on a plate for him like that, it's one of the few players in the world you can expect, nine times out of ten, to bang it in 100%. Not 100%, 90% of the time. Kylian Mbappe driving through an elegant finesse on that one. And that is going to make it 3-0. Obviously, there is more goals to come because Poland do get a consolation goal here with Zielinski into Kraczowiak at the back post. The player that went from PSG to West Brom. Quite an interesting career from him. Um, but nevertheless, a very comfortable second round game. And that puts us against Senegal in the quarterfinals in what ended up being a very comfortable 3-0 win as well. Um, now, this game, we dominated. We simply dominated. I mean, 20 shots, 6 on target, 2.88 xg, 57% of the ball. None of the goals were penalties. Complete, utter domination. Obviously, everyone getting involved. Senegal's team, again, they do actually have Mane on here because he's not injured on this game. And do you know what? It's not a bad team on paper. It's not the best. They have got some decent players. You look at Koulibaly, Mendy, obviously the other Mendy in midfield, Coyote, Mane, Saar, Dia. Um, they've got some really good players, but just not enough firepower to deal with France. And obviously, we come out and pick up quite an easy win. Watch the goals here, then. It's going to be Kante winning it back. Plays it out into Varane, who's in an unfamiliar position on the right-hand side. And Bappe cuts it back into Benzema. And this guy is on absolute fire. He's not missing. He's scoring every game. What you'd expect from him. Theo Hernandez into Kimbembe, into Kante. Again, a fantastic player in this system. Griezmann out on the left. A ball into Fakir. And Fakir, again, a player who possibly I have credited him a few times. But you'll notice some key players, Kante, Fakir, on Benzema. They're really the key sort of icons in this team. Kante actually picks up a knock here, but he did decide to stay on. I won the ball through for Tushinemi. And of course, Mbappe turns up because we've not been giving him credit. And there he pops up with a goal. So obviously this France team, I know when I made this video, I, I can already see some of the comments, you know, you should be going invincible with France. You should be winning the World Cup. And I do agree to an extent, but at the end of the day, I put up a poll and it got some interest to make a France tactic. And I thought, do you know what? We'll, we'll, my aim is to try and make every single tactic I can 
of teams left in the tournament from this point forwards. Obviously, um, I'd love to make one on Portugal, um, which won't be coming this week, but next week, um, if they're in the in the tournament or not. So if you guys do want to see any other team that has been eliminated, possibly, do let me know. I do have a Germany Hansi Flick tactic as well that did go invincible and is a ton of fun to use, but I didn't upload it because obviously they got grouped and I thought it was a little bit, little bit embarrassing. But if you guys do want to see it, then do comment below, release the Hansi Flick and I'll bring it to you. We then go over to the semi-finals in a game which did go to extra time against Portugal. It was a game, however, we did deserve to win. And to be honest, probably shouldn't have even gone to extra time based off the stats. 60% possession, 3.47 XG, 16 on target, and 27 shots overall against a full-strength, fantastic Portuguese side. So, let's watch some of the goals then. We do take the lead, however, I do see here with Mbappe from an assist from Kunde. Benzema goes up the field here. It's going to be Kunde here, making a great run there into Mbappe. Wonderful actually goes through the legs of Mendes, and that is going to be a fantastic 1-0 lead. However, it's not enough because they do push us to extra time with Rafael Liao into Nunes. A good 1-2, to be honest. Poor defending there from Kunde, and it's going to be a great square into Jota. And it, it looked easy. And do you know what? It's because of defense. Just sort of just sort of fell asleep. It's shocking. It really is. We do bounce back though to take the lead in extra time with Griezmann into Kareem Benzema. He's never going to miss from there. And he doesn't. Into the bottom right corner. And that puts us 2-1 up in the 102nd minute. Towards the end of the extra time now, around the 116th minute, Benzema doesn't win the flick on, but it gets deflected back. A little bit of interceptions and Benzema from the outside of the box hits it very weirdly actually into the ground but with a little bit of curvature and it goes into the bottom right corner and that is going to be a very comfortable 3-1 semi-final and now we take on Holland a team which I think I've got so much I mean they're a great team right that they're fun to watch um, they're fun to watch for me I know a lot of people find their possession build up boring but I personally really enjoy it um we look at their team, they're actually going to be playing their 4 2 3 1. Usually it is a three at the back we're used to seeing with Van Hull, but it's a very good team on paper. The back line's good, the midfield's world class. Clivert, Depay, Dan Juma, Gakpo, a very young, um, of Dan Juma, Clivert, um, sorry, and Gakpo, a very young sort of front three. This is the team that we played in the World Cup final. It was a game which we did deserve to win. They had more of possession, which you can expect from a Dutch team. But better XG, more shots. In my opinion, it's a game we did deserve to win. We sort of just proved that possession is not everything. And it was a game which we did actually go 2-0 up in as well. Tuchinemi into Mbappe on the right-hand side. A wonderful bit of pace. Just absolutely ruining this back line. A wonder ball. And it's no other man than Kareem Benzema at the end of the day. This guy does it all. We then go again with clean them. I mean, Mbappe is just ruining this final for him. He really is into Hernandez, into Fakir. Shocking defending, to be honest, and it just about, just about goes over the line, I believe. I think it was onside. Yeah, it was onside. It's a great challenge there from Delit into Timber. Berghaus coming down the right-hand side. A good chest there. Good bit of control, and he hits it. And it's right at the keeper, but there's a lot of power, so I'm going to be a little bit lenient on the keeper for that one. And unfortunately, I think it was the case of a little too late for Holland, and we sort of already, you know, we got the two goals. They only managed to bounce back in the 92nd minute, and then the full-time whistle practically went. But if we look here, I wanted to show you this because I nearly forgot. It nearly went to extra time because Memphis to Pie, we're going to watch it, actually did have a disallowed goal. Right from kickoff, then, this would be. I'm going to watch how this happened because this is literally after the goal went in. We had, um, obviously, the kickoff. We play it quite calmly around here, actually. Kante, Upacano, Komen. At some point, they do win it back, though, because you're going to see the disallowed goal. It's going to be Komen running down this right-hand side, drilling it across, an easy collection. Um, obviously, I imagine at this point, Benzema was very tired. But Holland do get a chance, and it's going to be interesting to see where it comes from and why it was disallowed. So it's going to be Memphis who actually takes it. Upacano clears it. Memphis is he's offside. At the, yeah, he's offside. He's offside. Okay. So just about though. So it nearly could have went to extra time, which is interesting. Or not interesting, more annoying. But he was offside. It was quite a good line we held. And I believe if we go to player stats um, or team stats. No, we, we can't see that. Player stats. I want to see how many goals that um he scored. If we go to schedule, possibly. And we go World Cup final, and we go stats, and we go to player overview, possibly. Most goals, here we go. Kareem Benzema, 
does pick up the golden boot with eight goals played at the age of 34. Most shots, most dribbles made coming from Kylian Mbappe. A real, real good French display. And that leaves us with one last thing to do, and that is to break down this amazing Deschamps tactic. But before we do, be sure to leave a like on the video and do subscribe to the channel. But let's break down this tactic. Here we go then. So this is going to be the French tactic and it is a 4-2-3-1. However, in this system, you do have one midfield player that is sort of deeper, which is going to be Kante. And it works really well because he links up fantastic with the center backs can get the ball easier and just does a fantastic defensive job. But we're going to start off with a positive mentality in possession, fairly wide, pass into space, play or focus play through the middle, sorry. Play out of defence, mixed crosses, run at defence, slightly shorter and slightly higher with the tempo. In transition, regroup, counter, distribute to the playmaker and take short goal kicks. Out of possession, you want a standard defensive line, high press line of engagement, more often on the trigger press. Now, the player roles are going to start off. I've kept the players' faces in this one just to make it more personal, more, you know, the actual French team in your face type of thing. So, Megan, sweeper keeper on support with take more risks. I'm a big fan of this lately, the take more risk on sweeper keeper. They just sort of come out, collect loose balls a lot more often than what your average keeper does do. We then go over to Kunde as a fullback on attack. Cross, aim, center in brackets, aim the crosses at the center. Cross more often and get further forward. The left back is going to be a wing back on attack, aim the crosses at the centre, run wide with the ball, cross from byline and get further forward. We then have a ball playing defender on defend, hold position and take more risks. Varane, the central defender on defend, shoot less often, dribble less and hold position. Kante, the ball winning midfielder on defend, shoot less often, dribble less, take fewer risks, hold position and tackle harder. Deep line playmaker next to him a little bit higher up the pitch. On support, shoot less often, take more risks and hold position. We then go over to the attacking options, which is going to be, let's have a quick look, didn't mean to click that again. Griezmann on the support as a winger, dribble more, run wide with the ball, cross more often and stay wider. On the right hand side, we have a winger on the attack, roam from position, dribble more, run wide with the ball, cross more often, cross from the byline, get further forward and stay wider. The shadow striker, again, I always like to say you can use advanced playmaker, etc, etc. You can use anyone really in that role. But the shadow striker for me worked really well because look at the amount of goals Fakir did actually get. Dribble more, take more risks, get further forward and move into channels. And the last position is going to be Benzema, the star man. You saw how well this done for him. Advance forward on attack, take more risks, shoot more often and move into channels. But that is going to be the French national team tactic broken down for you guys. As always, if you do wish to download this, it can be found on the FM Scout website. If not, you can simply copy it as we do break it down. But that is going to be this video completed. So if you guys have enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like on the video. Do subscribe for more content and turn on notifications if you wish to never miss an upload again. That is it for me today, guys, and I will see you in the next one.